Howdy folks, Tim Puchkowski here with ABC Acres. Welcome back. It's been crazy out here. We've been planting like crazy and just been running around. So finally got a chance to sit down and make another video. Continue my series of uh, stop weeding so you guys can learn a little more about these uh, weeds that we like to rip out of our gardens. But many of these plants still have a bunch of benefits that you might want to consider keeping them around. And today I'm going to be talking about bioremediation. More specifically, phytoremediation and mycoremediation. So plants like this, uh, mus or Indian mustard, uh, it is, it is an invasive plant in the state of Montana. So we do try to keep, native, uh, keep our plants and plantings native as possible. But depending on where you're at, this could be a beneficial plant for uh, helping remediate the soils on your property. So Indian, Indian mustard is uh, an absorber of heavy metals. So if you have heavy metal contaminated soils such as um, you have cadmium, cadmium uh, mercury, lead, zinc, elements, metals like that, uh, these plants can be planted and will absorb them from the soil. Now once the uh, plants have grown to maturity, you can then take them, cut them, and remove them off site to be disposed of properly. properly. And you can do this continually uh, to uh, remediate this soil, to get rid of all those heavy metals. Another great thing about these type of plants for bioremediation is that you can easily broadcast seeds of these plants and they'll grow really well. They're weeds and so that means they grow really quickly and are very efficient at what they do. So it's an ideal candidate for trying to remediate soil. Indian mustard was even used in Chernobyl, which if any you're familiar with was a nuclear meltdown that happened in Ukraine. And this plant was used to help remediate, or is being used to help remediate the soil out there. So we're gonna go around the farm. I'll show you a few other weeds that, uh, that are being used throughout the world to help remediate soil. So let's go take a walk. Now we're here on the banks of our irrigation ditch. Behind me are cottonwoods. Cottonwoods are all along the bank of our uh, irrigation ditch. They actually make up the wall that uh, pretty much retains all the soil on the banks of our irrigation ditch. So they're actually really great at er uh, erosion control as well, but that's a whole other video. But what cottonwoods are really good at doing are breaking down and uh, degrading uh, petroleum products. So hydrocarbons such as benzene, toluene, and uh, tetrachloride, they're really great at absorbing those and breaking them down. So if you have uh, contaminated water or contaminated soil, planting a bunch of cottonwoods in that area will help remediate that soil. So, and I consider these weed trees just because there's so many of them and we have to constantly be pulling them out of our grow beds and constantly be trying to manage uh, all the growth of, uh, of their seeds. Because actually right now, you probably can't tell in the video, but it's snowing the cottonwood seeds right now. They're just coming down right now. So, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're prolific and they take over. So. Another reason why they're considered a weed. And we're back to the willow tree. Willow tree, you've seen this, probably this specific willow tree several times in our videos, if you've been following along. But it just goes to show that willow trees are very multifunctional and provide a lot for you. Whether it's making baskets, making willow tea uh, for root propagation, or good, uh, fodder for uh, livestock to be eating. So willows are very, very helpful and yeah, and easily a, a great asset to your uh, homestead, farmstead, permaculture farm. Willows are great. And 
In terms of bioremediation, phytoremediation, uh, their roots help absorb heavy metals from the ground, uh, whether it's from uh, rivers and streams to the soil, such as uh, heavy metals such as uh, cadmium and nickel, uh, or lead or mercury. These roots will absorb and uh, Again, another thing you can do is, uh, such as willows, once uh, a tree has been in an area for a while, depending on how bad the uh, contamination is, you can have that tree grow, or have a bunch of these trees grow, have them accumulate all the heavy metals, uh, and then you can cut them down and take them off site. Uh, or you can have them absorb all the heavy metals and you can just let it live and it it'll just be stored in that tree. It's not gonna leach back into the, uh, the ground. Wrapping up, I wanna talk about microremediation. But before that, another very common plant that's used for phytoremediation are uh, sunflowers. Uh, we don't really have any popping up right now that I wanted to show you, but uh, sunflowers are another great uh, phytoremediator that can be broadcasted planted really densely and they absorb heavy metals um, again such as lead, uh, mercury, cadmium, nickel, zinc. They can absorb them and sunflowers are, are a type of plant that you would grow, let them accumulate all the heavy metals and then cut them and take them off site. So uh, yeah, sunflowers again really effective means to do this. Uh, and, th and this is something that's actually done on a, on a commercial industrial level too. You know, it's not just for at, at home use. Um, companies are actually using these type of plants to, to bioremediate uh, areas and it is a cost effective economical way uh, to help restore soil, restore our waterways. So it is a great means of remediation. So I'm laying here next to this beautiful bloom of mushrooms. The reason why is because microremediation. Microremediation is the use of mushrooms to help remediate our soil and waterways. Uh, now, fungi are an incredible organism. They're uh, the closest related kingdom to humans. Uh, and they eat like us. They breathe like us. They're, they can be medicinal. They uh, are edible. There are a bunch of benefits to mushrooms. And yeah, they're great at bioremediating our soil and waterways. So they can be used to uh, accumulate pesticides, herbicides from the agriculture industry, dyes from textile industries, uh, chemicals from the leather industry, as well as heavy metals that are in our ground. So, yeah, mushrooms are really great at doing this. They're considered uh, hyper accumulators because of how good they are at accumulating all these pollutants. And once they accumulate them, uh, we can then chop off the bloom and take that off site to be disposed of properly. So those are just a few of uh, the bioaccumulators that are found in just the, the regular average uh, landscape. Um, you know, I, I want people to recognize the benefits of these plants that are oftentimes overlooked and you know, they're more, they're more than uh, just weeds. They go beyond that and they can offer a bunch of benefits uh, to us. So yeah, that is just about it. So. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys have used these plants in bioremediation, I know they're certainly being used in uh, commercial industrial uh, size projects. Uh, there actually are really effective and e economical cheap ways to remediate soil and water. So let me know in the comments and until next time, happy growing.